The fourth type of tissue is nervous tissue, which we can say is specialized for communication. It's not exclusively the communication tissue. Uh, glands, for example, and epithelial tissue communicate. Muscles communicate in a similar way to nervous tissue, but usually as the receivers of information. So it's not exclusively about communication, but when we think about communication, we often think about the electrical signals that travel through our body along nerves and that sort of thing. While the other types of tissue that we've been considering are classified into different types, simple or stratified epithelia, or loose or dense connective tissues, the types of muscle tissue. In nervous tissue, we don't so much classify it into different types of subtypes of tissue, but rather it's all nervous tissue. There's some variation depending on where we're looking, but they're all kind of the same. This list highlights some of the issues that have to do with what makes up nervous tissue and how it varies in different places. But uh, again, it kind of, everywhere that we look, it's going to have the same basic components. I want to deal with these three things individually, though. Nervous tissue is made up of two main cell types. There are neurons and there are glia. Glia come in various types. In this picture here, we see astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, microglia. Um, there are other types found here and there. Um, glia outnumber neurons quite a bit, probably about 10 to 1 in most regions of the nervous system. Glia comes from the Greek word for glue. At one time, glia were thought to just be the things that hold nervous tissue together. We're discovering more and more about the various things that they, they can do. They support neurons. They regulate what's going on in the extracellular space. Uh, they keep the electrolyte balance in the proper settings. Um, there are certain types of glia that provide insulation around nerve fibers. Uh, in this picture, what's called a myelin sheath is that insulation. Um, there are specialized glia that act kind of like red, white blood cells in helping to fight off infection. There are a lot of different things that glia do, and there are many that are needed to provide the support for the neurons in the nervous tissue. This is an image from the nervous system chapter. And it just illustrates what gray matter and white matter look like. So this is the brain. It's had a, a piece of it cut away so that we can see inside. And there is white matter, which in fact does look white because it has a high lipid content to it. And then there's what's called gray matter, which actually doesn't look so gray in this. It looks a bit more pink because of the uh, blood that's in that tissue. And it's usually called gray matter more because that goes with the idea of calling white matter white matter. But uh, the uh, difference is just in the appearance. Gray matter, we tend to see more of the neuron cell bodies. And in white matter, we see more of the nerve cells that have that insulation from uh, glia, which is lipid rich. And then this is another picture from the nervous system chapter. Uh, nervous tissue is different depending on where we look in the nervous system. There's the central nervous system, which is the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which is everything else made up of what are called ganglia and nerves. In the central nervous system, the types of glia that we see are specific to that. And in the periphery, there's a different uh, set of glia. Um, there's a barrier separating the central nervous system from the rest of the body called the, quote, blood-brain barrier. And so other tissues don't get into the brain in the same way that we would see in the periphery. So there's just a difference in what the nervous tissue is like. Consider this question. Um, when you feel that you've reached an answer, hit the next button to go into the next slide, which will reveal the correct answer.
the glia provide a support system for the neurons, and so there needs to be a good number to do the various things that are required. Um, some of them insulate the nerve fibers, some of them provide support controlling the concentrations of, ex of extracellular fluids, others help regulate the integration between the central nervous system and the circulatory system, and there are just a number of different things that take place, and a rough ratio of about 1 to 10 neurons to glia is common throughout the nervous system. It's different depending on where we look, but probably overall, especially in the brain, for instance, there's going to be about 10 times as many glia as there are neurons.